Hi, I'm Glenn. Today's big shout out is to Newington College and all of the students who are working on this LED lit display project. So grab a splat, eraser and pencil, and let's begin. Measure across your page 100 mil, roughly, and then up 60, and that's our starting point. With the splat on your starting point, we're drawing a right and a left splat angle line. They're called isometric lines and I'm extending those. Use a really light line. Some of these we'll need to erase later on. Good. Now I'm going to mark off one length of the splat edge and a half length. You may well uh, use your own measurements for this, but um, since everyone's using different measurements, uh, I'm just going to refer to the length of splat. I'm going two and a half splat lengths out to the right. Now lining up that line in the slot, I'm drawing a line and that will be on my isometric angle again. So let's extend that. And we're going to do the same thing on the left. Watch. On that point, line up the gap in the splat so that you can see the line through it and then draw a line. Great. Let's extend that one and where those two lines intersect, that shows me where I need to erase. I'm going to drop a line down now, one splat length from each corner. Now those two points I'm going to join using a ruler and same on the left side. All right, now I'm stepping down the thickness of the timber. I'm using 10 millimeters. 12 is a common size with, uh, with pine that I think this project's made out of. Now I'm joining those dots up with a line I'm measuring off the same timber thickness uh, back on that line and dropping that one down. Let's do the same at the back. Come forwards the thickness of your timber. In my case, it's 10. I'm talking about three points here. And each of those three points, I'll be dropping a short line straight down. Make them all the same length. I'm picking four millimeters. That comes from, say, plywood the timber that I could be using to cover the bottom. Connect the end of those three lines to create the base. Now it's time to draw the acrylic. In between those two points, mark halfway. You could measure or guess. Same at the back, halfway along that line, place a mark. Join those two with a line. And now it's time to take that line straight up into the air. So let's draw a guideline, a light line straight up from that point, and from that point, a line straight up or vertical. Now, how high to make the acrylic? In my case, I'm going to go one and a half splat lengths. Let's do the same at the back. And what's next? Yep, we're going to get the ruler and join those. That means there's a few lines that will be hidden. So let's erase those. For my next step, I'm going to imagine this plane and we're going to slide this flat surface or plane forwards and backwards to give us two sheets of acrylic side by side. So from that corner, draw a line forwards and backwards. Often acrylic is three millimeters thick. At the ends of those lines, all the way around the front, we're going to join with a ruler. Now remember to try and draw lightly. You can always come back and darken these lines in. Sometimes we need to change our minds or change the design. So let's go really lightly. So that's one sheet of acrylic. Now behind that, remember we went backwards by three millimeters. So let's join those up as well. But here, 
we've only got two lines. The sheet in front uh, would be opaque and the sheet behind is often clear. I'm extending that acrylic down into the design. So I've erased those lines. Now I'm doing a little fix up. This is representing the end grain on the ends of the lengths of timber. Now we see a particular pattern, but on the long sides and the lengths of the timber, you can draw anything that represents some grain. So that's end grain. It's often in curves. And here you can draw just straight lines, loops, as long as they're not repeated, as long as um, they're kind of unpredictable lines and not like a zebra crossing, they'll look great. Now for the power lead. Sketch a half an oval or ellipse. Then put your pencil on the splat blip and a second one and swing an arc which is a part of a circle. That gives me a guide to draw in the bottom of the lead. Neat. Let's talk about some designs. Over the top, I'm going to sketch an idea. What about if I took the corner back by one splat length on the isometric angle? Then I'm going to join those and connect it to the base, because the base hasn't moved. So I'm leaning the acrylic back. Let's try and mirror that theme into the timber base. So if I chamfer or take the corner off, that's what it could look like. It may make it tricky to join more pieces of timber because uh, they're not all at 90 degree joins now, but have a talk to your teacher about it. For example, if I round something off, uh, maybe it could have a section that opens up. So sketching lots of ideas at this stage is how you um, can play around with ideas. So that's a chamfer where I um, am simply using a plane to remove the corner. But even that could have variations. What about if I remove the corner on a taper? And here's the same thing, but in reverse. This would be a little harder to cut in. We could add um, or inlay other pieces of timber to add some decoration. As for the engraving, uh, if you wanted to represent lettering on an isometric angle, uh, you start off by just crating it in. So MC squared is the name of my business, so I'm drawing two squares. Notice the strokes of the M are vertical, and so they'll stay vertical on my sketch. But the bottom of the M obeys the isometric angle. Now the center line of the C I'll mark in. That gives me a guide to draw my C. Great. Now let's render this to make it appear like the material it is from timber. I would cover the whole drawing with a light brown. And then I'm choosing one side, paper mask there to get a nice tidy line. And that side is going to be darker. It's like it's more in shadow. Use a sharp um, pencil to draw these join lines in the timber. But around the outside of the drawing, called the cutting line, you can go much darker. That's going to help lift it off the page. Leave a little white highlight on your cord to make it look like it's uh, glossy plastic. A great idea is to practice your rendering on a photocopy of your original drawing. Thanks for watching. Best of luck with your projects. I'm sure they'll be fabulous. Can't wait to see them. Thanks. Bye.